I remember going to New Zealand, and believe me, I've been in a lot of places on this issue. And the New Zealand has formed a free trade agreement with China. And we asked somebody in their foreign affairs department, how are you going to enforce this no forced labor product side of it? And do you know what he said? And I can still remember sitting there listening to him say it. He said, we're going to have an inspector in Beijing. That was his answer. You know, it's, it's, it's to laugh. But uh, people, like, understandably, like cheap uh, uh, consumer goods, and they like uh, Christmas decorations that are cheap too. And so please, all of you, think about where these, if you see something, a, a light, bright light, just look and see where it's made. And if it's coming from China, you have a very good probability that it's coming from a forced labor camp. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, incidentally, the New York Times announced on Saturday that the, that uh, President uh, Xi has said he will uh, stop, he's going to close these labor camps. And nobody hopes that, I'm sure, more than you or I. And the trouble is they've announced it before and it didn't happen. They're making a huge amount of money from these, these camps, and they're making even more money from the Falun Gong practitioners and the, and the criminals, who are uh, the convicted criminals for, whose organs are taken as well. The human body, is, we estimate, if you look at that, is worth about, about a half a million dollars if, it's, if the, it's sold for parts, so to speak. So it's an immensely profitable business. The, the surgeons make money. The People's Liberation Army makes money for flying the organs. The nurses make money who are involved. Uh, I think the police probably make some money. It's a, uh, it's a very profitable uh, business. Some of you, Manyan, knows they've actually... You, if you go to a hospital now in China, you have to pay cash before you can get in the door. And you were telling me a story this morning that was just horrifying about kids that were sick and couldn't... couldn't they didn't, their parents didn't have the money, so they didn't get in to be treated for food poisoning. So it's a really a system that's... People say, well, China's a communist country. How, why would they not look after their people? You can, you'll talk about that. Um, anyway, David Matus and I uh, uh, undertook to do this, this uh, study, independent study in 2006. We looked at a lot of evidence. We found about 52 kinds of... Uh, you can look at our report if you want, and I'm sure we, it's available in 18 languages can you show the languages, things at the bottom? There are 18 languages available in, and you can see, you can see the, uh, the amount of evidence we have. Ladies and gentlemen, it's simply massive. That uh, uh, I was a prosecutor for 10 years. I should know something about evidence, and, and believe me, the evidence is, is overwhelming to anybody that is fair-minded. But there are people out there, by the way, who you could have 150 kinds of evidence. You could have a, you could have a photograph of a doctor uh, operating on a patient or a drugged, no, a drug big, a donor, and that wouldn't be enough for them either. Um, so we, we can talk about the evidence if you like. Let me just mention two of the 52 kinds of evidence we found. One is the uh, wife of a surgeon who, uh, whose husband, oh yeah, that's her. Her, uh, her name is Annie. She, uh, yeah, her, hus her husband removed the corneas from 2,000 Falun Gong practitioners in a two-year period from 2001 to 2003. Uh, of course, after that happened, they were, their, he told her their bodies were taken into another operating room and all of their other organs were taken and the bodies were then burned. Uh, our, our statement is in our report. You can read it. It's actually in the books too. You can decide for yourself whether you think she's telling the truth. Uh, I think she was telling the truth as best she could. But if there are any lawyers here, you'll know that what she said is hearsay evidence, not admissible in a court of law, at least in Canada. Now, her husband, I'm sorry to tell you, was paid the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of dollars for these 2,000 operations. To his credit, he finally stopped doing them. He said, I can't do this anymore. I'm having nightmares. And he stopped doing it. And uh, uh, they both left China. She went to the United States and made this press conference where that's probably taken. And he came, I'm sorry to tell you, to Canada to visit his aunt, I'm told, in Toronto. And, of course, he wouldn't talk to us. He's not going to admit to being part of mass murder. So uh, we have not been able to talk to uh, the surgeon in question. We have um, 51 other kinds of evidence. The one that uh, I guess I should probably mention is the phone calls. Um, we had uh, 
people phoning, of course, in speaking Chinese. We recorded the conversations. We called a whole lot of institutions around uh, around China. Can you, can you, is the map up, up in there that shows all the places where we found that it was being done? Maybe it's not a, yeah. Uh, yeah, the taped, the taped calls to hospitals throughout China were about 15 of them across the country told us they were using Falun Gong uh, organs. Uh, I mean, it's, I've said this before, but it's, it's like a grotesque rest, restaurant where you go in and you, you pick a lobster and say, I'd like that one. And the reason that people pick Falun Gong to be the so-called donors is that they don't smoke or drink. They're, they, uh, they're healthy, they do exercises, and, and Falun Gong practitioners are known to be healthy in China and, of course, outside China, too. So a lot of people want to have a Falun Gong as the person who gives up their life to, to give them the donors. Um, yeah, you can see there's some others. Uh, a number of people, I think I mentioned this before, said they were systematically blood tested every three months in these camps. Of course, they wondered, why are we testing us? You're torturing us. You're, uh, you're making us work ourselves as hard as we can and so on. Why are you testing us to see how... And they, and they were they were confused as to why they were being tested. And the other people in the in these camps were furious that why are you, why are you just doing the Falun Gong practitioners? Little did anybody there know that they're why they were being done. But what we do now. Okay, um, how am I doing for time? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay, well I'll... I want to... Can you show the picture of Gao Zhisheng? Where are you, Dan? You're at the back. Yeah, this... Oh, yeah. Okay, this man is, happens to be my personal hero. He, uh, he was born in a cave. Can you imagine in, in rural China? His family was so poor, they, he couldn't go to university. He went into the army. When he got out, he, uh, he couldn't go to law school. He couldn't afford that. But he managed to pass the bar exam. I don't know how you do that. He's a, obviously a brilliant individual. And he, uh, he defended farmers, miners, and so on, all the people who were having problems with the system. But then one day he decided he would defend Falun Gong. And then the thing came down on him like a ton of bricks. They took away his uh, license to practice. They took away, uh, he had police living in his home. Um, it's, uh, it's a hideous. There's a movie actually that's just been made on him called uh, Sir Transcending Fear that I hope some of you can see. It's, it's, uh, he's in prison now. He's been tortured. Uh, it's, uh, it's unspeakable what's happened to him. And uh, he's... Uh, He's one of the bravest people on the face of the earth. I think he's a Nelson Mandela or, or a Mahatma Gandhi figure. And I hope that uh, if you Google him, you'll see what an extremely uh, unique person he is. He's actually a Christian, but he defends Falun Gong because he thought they needed, uh, they needed to be protected. And I hope anybody of any faith would help, uh, help or no faith would help Falun Gong.